Hey guys, welcome back to Dynasty Football Live. Today, we're going to be bringing you a little something different. We're going to go and make a team with all the current free agents. Now, we're sitting in the dead heat of summer. We're trying to figure out what we're going to do, who we're going to trade for, where we're going to go. We're going to try to find some guys to maybe get on the little bit of the lower end of value spectrums. They might bring you some, some value throughout the season that you can get on the cheap. Um, some of these guys are going to be some hard hitters this year. And uh, I think you already know who some of them are. Some of them you might be surprised to see out there. Um, but today we're going to build a little dynasty team of current free agents. I mean, we're in July, guys. This draft is coming up soon, and we're trying to get you as you know prepared as possible. So with that being said, I'm going to let my co-host, Manny, Get in to the quarterback free agents. What do you got, Manny? This is uh, kind of interesting because we have, um, if you think about the main, I guess for me, there's four guys who, you know, are, are still free agents who can, I think, can still contribute. Um, we have Carson Wentz. We have Teddy Bridgewater. Matt Ryan, as weird and as, as that might sound based on what he did last year. Um, and obviously Joe Flacco, who kind of played, had his top moments where he kind of played really well. Um, I think for me, the guy who, who is still somewhat relevant. Um, and I think he has a chance to come back. I mean, the town is there and I think it's just a matter of the right situation. Um, I don't know. We'll see. But for me, my quarterback one uh, is going to be um, Carson Wentz. And uh, it's, I know it sounds weird, um, you know, having some of the other guys, uh, available right now. Uh, and, and, and it sounds weird in the sense that as you can, uh, you know, maybe you've heard this or not, but we have, um, you know, him and, and Gruden kind of working together, which is kind of a weird combo. <laughs> if we talk about, you know, NFL names that probably you don't want to hear about is uh, John Gruden with what happened uh, with him and the Raiders um, and the emails and all that stuff. And ironically, Carson Wentz played for the you know, commanders who was the other team involved in that whole email scandal, but apparently they're working together, uh, doing some film study uh, and getting ready to, 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 you know, be able to contribute this year, uh, whether it is as a, as a backup starting the season or a uh, potential starter, you know, with injury. So uh, for me, Carson Wentz has a chance. He's still somewhat young, you know, for a quarterback position. So um, yeah, that's my quarterback one. Yeah, man, I, I totally agree, guys. Um, Carson Wentz actually went and got him last year. If you look back at his stats when he when he started the season last year, he was a top top ten, top five quarterback. I mean, you're talking about a guy who was really rolling last year mm -hmm. and uh kind of surprised us all. I was like, wow, maybe Carson Wentz found his niche here with uh, you know, with the commanders. But you know, for me, um he, he does what Carson Wentz kind of always does, and he kind of hit a brick wall for some reason. I don't know, man. Like, um, I don't know if it's luck. I don't know if just stuff gets in his head when he has a bad game. But, man, when he really – when he falls off, he falls off. And uh, I think that Carson Wentz could come in and be a valuable quarterback to a team that, you know, loses one to injury. It happens every year. You know, people aren't willing to give up the capital to go get a, a high-end quarterback from somebody else. Um, you know, Carson Wentz, let's just say, for instance, a playoff team's quarterback goes down. This is the perfect example of a guy that you um, kind of get off the waivers, stash him. You know, you might, you might have to use up one of those uh, keeper spots for for the, for the season. But I think Carson Wentz can come in and truly – be a valuable quarterback still. I am agreeing with you on this one. Uh, Carson Wentz, for me, like you said, is the number one quarterback available on the free agent wire out there. Um, now what I'm going to talk, the guy I'm going to talk to 
uh, I talk about next is Teddy Bridgewater. I think um, when we look at Teddy and, and the roller coaster career that he's had, um, you know, playing with the Vikings and the Dolphins, um, I think the guy can come in and really contribute. I think Teddy's been a serviceable, serviceable quarterback. Um, I, I do think that he is a landing spot um, pickup only. I wouldn't go try to draft this guy and say, oh, I'm going to stash him right now. I think he'll be on the waiver wire for you guys all year long until he actually um, gets some steam on a quarterback needy team. Um, really a plug and play starter um, at this point in his career. Um, only injury, you know, will let him get back on the field. That's my personal opinion. So for me, it's Teddy Bridgewater here right behind Carson Wentz as uh, our free agent uh, quarterback. All right. Um, I think for me next uh, at the running back position, um, obviously the main the main name we're going to be talking about is, uh, you know, it has to be, uh, you know, Dalvin Cook. Um, you know, a lot of questions about where he's going to land. Uh, maybe Hopkins and him go to the same spot. Um, the trending name uh, or the team that, that kind of trending uh, forward uh, or upwards for him uh, seems to be the Dolphins. Um, that would be a, a ridiculous offense uh, if that were to be the case, especially with the scheme and, and the speed that offense has. Uh, and I think even though it hurts a chain, I think in real football, um, when we talk about re the real football part of it, um, it would be great to have a chain you know, with that speed, obviously Cook still has some speed, but, you know, a chain has that different kind of gear. So um, obviously a chain um, or Cook rather, uh, here's that the number one, obviously they still have Kareem Hunt and Elliott. Uh, I think Hunt can still be, uh, you know, definitely a, a serviceable, um, you know, role player. I don't know about a starter, but um, as far as the elite RB1 for me, it's going to be um, Dalvin Cook. Um, I agree, guys. I went out and got this guy this offseason. Um, it was before he was released from the Vikings. I went and um, I, I gave up. I gave up a few guys to get a couple of solid veterans that you know I thought I needed on my team to uh, contribute. Um, I ended up getting this guy with um, <laughs> Alexander Madison, and um, as I like to say, that tree split in half. And now. I'm looking good with an RB1 with Madison and another potential RB1 and Cook because let me let me just break this down to you guys. Dalvin Cook, wherever he signs, if it ain't the Jets, because I've heard him link to the Jets, which, God, I hope he doesn't go there. Me too. Um, <laughs> um, let's just be honest. Dalvin Cook hasn't missed the past five years. Um, yeah, his, his yards per – you know, yards per touch has went down. Um, he's 27. He's not 23. But the guy produces. The guy can still bang and, and swang with the best of them, dude. Like, you're talking about a top five top five running back, okay, the past five years. We're not talking about no Kareem Hunt. We're not talking about no Leonard Fournette. We're talking about Mr. Dalvin Cook. So when you guys talk about Dalvin Cook and you talk about putting him – on a team, you better put some respect on this guy's name because th this cat can still ball out. He's only 27 years old. And uh, for me, he is, like you said, for sure the best free agent running back out there right now. If you can go grab him and, you know, maybe give up, I don't know, if you can sneak in there somehow, give up a, a first rounder for next year and get this guy on your team, I think he's worth it. That's just if you're competing and you need this this RB because, man, let's face it, guys, RBs are hard to grab. They're hard to get and they're expensive to get when you want them on your team and you ain't got them because people know that. They're like, oh, well, look at you. You don't have any running backs on your team. Give me, give me like multiple first rounders. Well, a veteran like this on a new team before the season starts is a little bit cheaper than going to buy this guy during the season when he's actually doing – what Dalvin Cook does. So I just want to speak a little bit on Dalvin Cook there. My second guy off the board. And just because the guy is a touchdown machine, he got a lot of touchdowns for the Cowboys last year, Ezekiel Elliott. Um, he's no doubt 
Um, same age as Dalvin Cook, and um, he slowed down a little bit. I think he got a little bit thicker, you know, um, than his, uh, you know, earlier years. He's a little bit uh, acclimated to the NFL. You know, he's 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 over there eating chicken wings in the offseason when he needs to be pushing them weights. Um, you know, he's really eating now instead of eating on the football field. So, uh, guys, Ezekiel Elliott, I think he can still come in and get the job done. He's another one that I picked up this offseason for a second rounder. I feel like if you could grab him for that, he's worth it. I mean, you talk about a guy that could come in and take over a backfield if an injury happens in the offseat or in the in training camp. Guys, I promise you, I promise you, listen to me. A running back is going to go down. One way or the other this year, a running back is going to go down. And guess who they're going to call? Hey, Zeke, you ready to eat? Let's go. Get over here and tote the ball for us. We need them touchdowns that you put up for the Cowboys last year. Um, I've heard him link to a couple of teams. But he's sitting back, I think, like D-Hop and all the other guys. They're waiting for the injury or the perfect situation to happen before they sign somewhere, which is smart, so they can get their money. So for me, second running back off the board here is Ezekiel Elliott. All right. Um, I think I'm going to jump over to the wide receiver position. Um, and for me, obviously, there's I think there's probably two or three guys that we can talk about here. But obviously, um, the main guy is obviously. Um, now, where is he? Yeah, here yesterday. Yeah, I, was, I was looking at the – there's two Ds there. Uh, yeah, DeAndre Hopkins. And uh, obviously, you know, he, he came out and, um, you know, made a comment about, you know, his uh, – he hasn't really said what team he prefers or what, you know, where he's going to go or lean towards. But uh, there was a tweet because some people were talking about him retiring soon. And he's like, dude, I still got this. I'm going to get 1,400 yards regardless of what team I go to. That's how much confidence it has in his abilities. Um, he's still 30. And what he did last year – um, even after, you know, being, um, you know, being suspended, um, you know, he had a really, really good season. Obviously, you know, the year before that he was hurt. But, you know, if you look at the, the, the you know, 18, 19 and 20 season, uh, you know, he was a top 10 uh, wide receiver, no doubt, um, or top five even. So um, I have no problem with uh, with him, um, especially if you're in a win now mode, um, trying to get him and. Uh, I really hope uh, this is not the case. Uh, I mean, if he goes to the Bills, it'd be great, I guess. You know, obviously, match, you know, pairing him up with Allen. But I think as far as uh, there's just too many, too many players. Um, you know, I think his targets are going to go down a little bit. You know, with Diggs there, and they also have obviously um, Cooks at the running back position too, which is obviously a running back who gets you know targets in the in the receiving game. Um, they have Gabe Davis too. Um, obviously they have the, the tight end they just drafted. They have Jordan, um, not, or not Jordan Knox, uh, Dawson Knox too. So it's kind of, even though he's kind of being, uh, trending towards maybe signing with the bills, I kind of hope for fantasy purposes that he doesn't, uh, Titans kind of scare me with the quarterback situation. Um, I don't know. We'll see, but definitely Hopkins is still has it. I'm not really worried about it, especially if you're a win now mode. I would definitely go get a uh, Hopkins if he, uh, if he if he's available in your league. Yeah, I agree, man. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, you know, for me, I'm I'm a Texas fan and absolutely just miss this guy, man. He what he does on the field is you know top five receiver all day long. It don't matter where he plays. This cat will get the ball. Uh, for me, Hopkins is an easy buy right now. If you're contending, go get him at, you know, maybe a future first, maybe, maybe, that's a maybe. That's a little steep, but, you know, maybe if you can get him for a second, maybe a, a, a younger player, do so if you're competing. Um, so, guys, Hopkins goes to the Chiefs, and it's absolutely a wrap. This guy is putting up 1,400 yards, no doubt, no doubt. Um, this guy would be electric on the Chiefs, and I think that's where our our hope in the uh, dynasty realm lies with DeAndre is that he signs with a team like that and a quarterback like that. Um, yeah, 
st- still missing you over here in H Town, baby. I wouldn't mind a reunion, and I, I definitely wouldn't uh, mind you getting our new quarterback, CJ Stroud, acclimated to the NFL. So for me, perfect situation would be the Houston Texans. That's if your boy wants to come home. I mean, CJ Stroud would have a solid veteran to throw the ball to, um, get his confidence through the roof, you know, like, man, I would, we have the cap space to do it. So, you know, for me, a hidden, a hidden team over here in the corner that could make the playoffs too, which you might see in the, in the future videos here on DFL is, um, you know, DeAndre Hopkins to the Texans again. Why, why, why not? I say, why not? So, anyways, let's go to my next guy here, wide receiver two on our uh, dynasty free agent team. Uh, I'm going to talk about Jarvis Landry. Uh, We're talking about a guy who has been a wide receiver one in the future and I think could bring some value to a team that is really wide receiver needy. Um, I'm not saying go get him. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, he might be worth a little stash if he's there on the waiver wire and you're a little thin at wide receiver and you feel like having a little cushion there at the bottom of your roster with some guy that could potentially land on a team that, hey, we're talking about 800 yards for me at, in his career now, 800 yards max. Uh, but uh, Jarvis Landry still got it. So um, definitely a, a stash guy for me, Jarvis Landry, wide receiver too. All right. Um, do you have any other wide receivers or do you want to move on? I, I really, as far as, I mean, you got to be. I got a, I got a few more that could go on there, guys. Um, uh, other names to mention, and then we'll get on to our two flex spots here. Um, Julio Jones, he's probably he's probably toast, but, you know, he may end up landing on a, 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 a team. And then another guy, uh, Kenny Galladay. Boy, the fall has really hit him hard since he <laughs> since he left the Lions. Golly, I remember when Galladay was like, man, borderline top ten receiver. It's crazy now; he's just nowhere to be found. But uh, yeah, those are the two guys I would mention at wide receiver free agent. All right, um, uh, I guess if we're going, uh, you know, as a, a kind of a role player, and you need kind of a flex or really desperate at the running back position. Uh, I would go with, uh, with hunt. I think, um, why? Oh, I think, uh, you know, obviously what he's done in the last two year or last three, three seasons or four seasons rather with the, um, with Cleveland, um, has been really, really good. Um, you know, as far as, uh, not really putting a lot of, you know, getting a lot of touches, but he's doing a lot with the touches that he does get. Um, I think he, you know, obviously great receiver out of the backfield. Um, but at this point at, you know, even though his touches decrease because, you know, he's, you know, he's uh, Chubb's um, partner in crime there. Um, I still don't see him, even if he does sign with someone as a, as a guy who's going to be, you know, the lead back. Um, but, you know, he could probably get you what I think, I think if when, wherever, whenever he does decide to sign somewhere, um, Maybe if the Dolphins miss on Cook, maybe they go after Hunt. I, I don't know. Um, but I think for me, uh, probably 10 to 12, 13 touches a game, maybe. Uh, I don't know, man. He's kind of old over there. But uh, even for Ned, I, I don't know. I Honestly, it, I don't really have any, anyone else that's uh, fat fantasy relevant for me um, unless you're in trouble. And if you're in trouble – uh, you might as well pack it in uh, and plan for next season. So um, yeah. I think Hunt for me is the last guy I'm going to talk about. Yeah, yeah, Hunt. Uh, I think he's still got some. I think he's better than I. Th- I'm going to be honest, man. I think Kareem Hunt's better than a a lot of starting running backs in the NFL. I'm going to be brutally honest with you guys. If I was the LA Rams, I don't know why they just signed Sonny Michelle. Why the hell did you not call Kareem Hunt? I mean, dude. You see, with it, this guy's been a respectable running back behind Chubb, right? I mean, am I wrong? I mean, where's the respect for Kareem Hunt? Dude, dominated back in the day with the Chiefs. 
got in a little bit of trouble, whatever, you know, we know his situation. I'm not agreeing with that, nor do I condone that at all. Matter of fact, I think this dude should be out of the NFL because I think if you put your hands on a woman, that's a wrap. Like Ray Rice, you're gone. I don't think they should ever get a second chance. That's just my opinion. But moving forward, talent-wise, fantasy-wise, you know, um, I think the guy still got something in the tank. And I think a team that could use Kareem Hunt is a team like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think you put him behind Rashad White a little bit. I think Kareem Hunt's a lot fresher than Leonard Fournette, playoff Lenny or whatever. I never was a fan of Leonard Fournette. Never. Never thought he was like a superstar back. He's way overweight. But that's another guy I'm going to talk about here. He could go into a team that gets injured. Uh, you know, we've seen it year in, year out. These teams lose two running backs. You're calling Leonard Fournette. I mean, get him on the phone. Get him in here. Let him run the ball. I mean, it, it, it is what it is. I mean, these guys can still produce. Um, so Leonard Fournette is my uh, my next guy in line here on our free agent team. And uh, there's a few tight ends. I don't even know if they're really worth our time today, but I'm going to go ahead and get them out of the way for us so we can uh, we can wrap this one up. Guys, we want to bring you different videos to show you some potential value that you could get on your team. That's all we're doing these for is, you know, this is bottom of the barrel, scraping the barrel. Hey, I really need some depth here and that, that could end up turning, you know, silver into gold. You know, hey, it could happen. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen a lot. So the tight ends that we're looking at here um, for our free agent team, I'm going to say two, and then we're going to cut out. Uh, Cameron Brake, he's out there, and Kyle Rudolph. And there's another guy. I don't know if y'all remember this dude from Texas A&M. He went to the Colts. Keep an eye on Jalen Watermeyer. I don't think he's quite done. I think he's at 22. He might sneak in there and uh, land on a team and, could come up the depth chart. So uh, that's for the, for me, it's the tight ends. They're, they're really, really, really not what they used to be, but you never know guys. We want, we want to bring them to you just in case you got that. You got that little last arrow, you know, in the quill. So we'll, we'll do what we can here at dynasty to help you guys out. And for us, this is our 2023 all dynasty free agent team. You got anything else, Manny? No, that's it, man. This is kind of a hard video to do because, um, you know, other than the obvious choices, uh, you know, at the key positions, especially with Cooks and Hopkins being the guys, um, yeah. the rest of the guys, even though they can still be contributors uh, when you're talking about, uh, you know, NFL purposes and like real NFL, not not dynasty or fi fantasy football uh, perspective. A lot of the free agents can be contributors. Um, I just yeah. don't know if they're going to be you know, league winners, except for maybe Hopkins or, or Cooks. So uh, maybe, maybe, like you said, Elliot, you know, uh, hoping, hey. I don't know. He's always showing videos and working out, uh, but he's 230 pounds, man. <laughs> he needs to, I think he needs to play closer to 210. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's all I had, man. Hey, man. Hey, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, guys, we need you to like and subscribe and get on the DFL train with us, man. We love bringing you guys videos week in and week out. Until next mm -hmm. time, I'm going to leave you guys how I always leave you. Dynasty football out, baby. Whoa.